Well, welcome to another three-point edit tutorial, or breakdown this time at least. I'm looking at using Eevee uh, to construct simple motion graphics with tracking. And in this example, I've got a font laying on the ground with an interactive shadow catcher. Now, Eevee doesn't come out of the box with a shadow catcher, at least not at the middle of 2019. Maybe that'll change. But what you have to do is set up a ground plane to act as the shadow catcher and render that out transparently. Uh, as you can see in this frame, I have an example of a ground plane at zero height and my text object is sitting on top of that. You'll also notice there are some boxes or geometry underneath to distort the shadows being trapped on the ground. If we have a look at the tracker over here, you'll notice that I have uh, some video all tracked nicely ignore all the other trackers there so I've got an elevation change with a nice smooth drone shot I solved that into a camera move that looks like this so here we are changing elevation Let's change this view with the Z key. Let's go look dev. And we'll change the background image for the camera a little bit. Can't make it back because then it disappears behind the plane, even though it's alpha. The alpha and the background image don't seem to play too well together. So I have to default to a front or an overlay and then wind back the alpha a bit so I can just see the, uh, the effect of the text on top. So you can see I've, I've probably misregistered these boxes a little bit here in my haste, but they are, have to catch the shadow falling from the text object down onto the shadow catcher. I should mention before going further that I'm using a sun lamp. This is to ensure the whole scene gets good coverage of light and you don't get any other fall off in light intensity elsewhere in the catching plane. So I tend to avoid using spot lamps or point lamps. Here you can see that I've reduced the intensity quite a bit from its initial default position of I think 100 units. And I've altered the blur value and I've also added contact shadows with some blur value. You probably don't need to bother with contact shadows if nothing that you have is very close to a surface, but you will find some unusual blurring of the shadows adjacent to your object or your um, surface deformations, like you'll show you in a moment. But anyway, having said all that, there are some other issues we have to contend with. So if we go to rendered view, and I'll turn off the background image, you can see here that uh, my default plane is transparent and I've set that up. If we go down to materials view for the shadow plane, if we have a look over here in the settings in the properties panel on the left right hand side, I am currently alpha blending that. If I turn that off it's opaque, you can see it's just a white plane and it's catching the shadows. Let's have a look at applying the shadow catcher material to this cube object or this geometry for holdout. If I apply the same shadow capture, capture material to them, the transparency and the shadows give problems. Of course the object becomes transparent and you have these weird face issues. We don't want any of that. We want the shadows to be additive and occlusive or occluding each other. So how to do that? You can't mix the materials together in an effective way because you can't share shadow maps between objects. So the only way I could find was to apply these objects to the master mesh, which is this flat plane. We'll actually hide these cubes. Go back to my shadow plane. You can see the shadow plane is a flat catcher at the moment, so it's not distorting based on that geometry that I need to show through for the trucks that are occluding the uh, shadows on the ground. So, what do we do? Well, 
we can turn on some modifiers. I've subdivided the plane and the first modifier I apply is a boolean. Let's turn that on. The first thing I do here is I cut a hole in my plane based on the shapes of those cubes. See? So I'm cutting a hole through. Now the next boolean I do is a union boolean to add that shape back. Now you can see I have the same problem with my occluding geometry. Let's just turn off the cube. Oh, the cube is turned off. Now how do we get our faces to um, exhibit the right properties? Well, I need to turn off back faces for this so that transparency does not show us the um, back face of the uh, object. So let's go down to our materials view, our materials properties. And scroll down here, make sure our blend mode is alpha blend. And we want to turn off show back face. We don't need that. And now we have this occlusion happening. So we cut out the shadows and we add our other shadows from the geometry on top. You can see where this little truck is in the foreground. It's cutting out the shadows. Now, of course, they're not perfect shadows. If you want perfect shadows, I suggest you try cycles. But for quick motion graphics kind of renders that I need, which are very smooth and only rendering five seconds per frame, including composite, they seem to work quite well. Down in the um, shadow catcher material, let me turn off the blend and turn it back onto opaque. What's happening here is that I'm mixing a transparent with an emission shader that is black, so that's giving me the black shadow material. And I'm mixing those tra that transparency based on, if we look back up this flow here, a diffuse shader. Let's have a quick look at the diffuse shader. This is what the diffuse is actually seeing, if it was only a diffuse. And it's got a white base color. So that shows up only the shadows of our geometry. Then I am converting that diffuse shader to an RGB value or a color value so that we can reuse these shadow values. Then I'm popping that through a ramp so that I can modify the density of my shadow. So let's have a quick look at that. You can see here I can make it more contrasty or less contrasty with this ramp and then I am mixing that with a multiply value and integrating the quantity of the uh, alpha. So if I turn this down you can notice that the shadow is now distributing all over because the um, I'm narrowing, I'm clamping the shadow value, that's not what we want, but if I go too far the other way the shadow disappears. So you may actually want that. It's just a bit easier than editing this white value using show back face for the rear of the geometry is fine for our video and lineup for modifying geometry but it's no good if we're using alpha channel to investigate where our shadows are dropping so you have to turn that off and you need to turn that off to render the shadows anyway once we do that press render we get this shadow and the composite you can see from the composite that we're getting the shadow distorting here and the cutout down here, even though I've had a mismatched geometry. All I'm doing to composite this image is using the initial setup from the uh, tracker, and that's applying an undistort fill, um, and that's applying an undistort node plus a scale to stretch the video to fit our frame, our project size. And then it's a simple alpha over. Um, we're doing all the integration back in our 3D view rather than here, as we would do with cycles, which gives us a proper shadow catcher. As you can see, we have distorted shadows, occluded shadows, even badly occluded. And it was all quite simple to set up through Eevee. Got to like uh, modern drones for their ease of tracking, though. They're great. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this quick breakdown and uh, I'll see you next time for the next 
free point edit to upload. Oh, and don't forget to hit subscribe and like. Is that what you say? I think that's what you say.